Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. And I'm Beth Ellicott. You're listening to the midweek version of Fiber Talk, the twice weekly podcast for needlework artists. I like being an artist. Yes. Okay, so we we have a bad habit of talking before the show, and invariably that discussion ends up being an hour long, and then we actually record the show. <laughs> so we cut ourselves off today because then we end up saying the same thing twice because, yeah, so everything's fresh, not been discussed before today. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Because <laughs> yeah. New material. <laughs> I do the same thing with Jennifer and the same thing with Debbie. You know, it, it'd be an hour's past. Oh, we probably should record the show. Yeah. yeah. All right. right. Yep. Okay. A reminder now, uh, no stitch hour tonight. Not tonight. No stitch hour tonight. Um, well, uh, Marg and I will be in church praying for everyone's sorry little butts. So there we go. <laughs> um, and, and, we, and we need lots of that. We need lots of prayer. Yeah. Oh, do we all? Do we all? Um and then we're putting together things for the uh, Spring Hill uh, Stitch Along, the Rosewood Manor Karen Kluba Spring Hill design that we're going to start on January 1. And Needle and Haystack, Kathy Ray, Needle and Haystack is sponsoring the Stitch Along. And so we're in the middle right now of putting together the threads and kits that. Uh, Kathy will offer. I mean, obviously you can do your own, you know, nobody's saying you can't do your own, but, um, we're going to, what the plan is that we're going to have a, a kit that Jennifer's stitching and that'll be DMC and a kit that I'm stitching. And that's going to be a mixture of silks. Kathy's already put that together. NPI, Soie d'Alger, and there's some uh, rainbow gallery in there. Mm-hmm. I think that was Splendor. it. Yeah. A splendor, yes, splendor. That was what. So she's put that together. That's beautiful. It is gorgeous. Yep. Going to do it on an off white, um, and then we're working on Beth's. Because I got to be trouble. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. No, actually, so yeah. So Kathy's got a couple of options that she's working on for Beth, and then we'll, once we get that settled down and Kathy figures out pricing, then we'll be able to announce the kits. So you'll be able to, you'll have three choices, Gary, Beth, and Jennifer. Um, and then, uh, she's a, an off white, uh, uh, linen. I mean, you can, you can do, do what you want, obviously, but, right. um, uh, we're trying to make this simple for people who just, you know, give me a kit. Uh, right. so we're all, uh, on off white or cream linen, not sure what. Uh, and then of course, Ada, uh, you can do ADA, particularly with the DMC, if you prefer to do uh, do it on ADA, that's an option too. So it uh, should be pretty simple to approach for anyone at all levels and all interests. And uh, uh, so, yeah, but three different sets of thread is the plan. So you can just pick Beth, Jennifer, or Gary and um, uh, go with those or, or put your own thing together. And right. But anyway, so Kathy's putting that all together. And we'll have kits and we'll have photos of the um, uh, the threads for us and um, uh, pricing and everything. So that's coming up very soon. We're in the middle of that right now. Uh, just uh, to do it three different ways takes time on Kathy's part to just sit there and, and figure out what threads will work. But the the one she did for me, the silks, the combination, because uh, I, I was hoping to do MPI, but it just won't work uh, across the board. But uh, I, I, it looks great, I think. Yeah, the colors are. You sent me a photo of that, and it's just gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous colors. Yeah. Well, and the piece is gorgeous anyway. The colors right. on it are so vibrant. I yeah. just love it. So yeah. whatever she picks, she's she's got a great eye. She does have a good eye for color. So whatever she picks will be wonderful. Yes. Yes. And yeah, yeah you're you're exactly right. Yeah, the 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 colors are just vibrant in that design. It's really nice. So, ha ha, it's gonna be fun. And <laughs> I'm is, doing I'm is. doing mine on forty count. I'm not sure what Jennifer's doing, but I'm doing mine on 40 count. And then uh, we'll see what Beth does. It depends on what threads uh, come right. together. We end up, yeah. Right. All right. Yeah, because you're looking at, uh, well, one option that she's working on is 100 slash 3. Right. And, which... and 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 the problem will be that is, is you know, can she get the colors? And, right. um, and I don't, I think we, we, I think that's 46 count. I think that's probably what it'll end up being. So I'll need my 
my slut, put on the <laughs> nose glasses and plenty of light for that one. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. the thing. Cause I, I was hoping to do it all in MPI silks, but uh, the color range just isn't there. And so then she ended up, uh, well, and, and that you know happens a lot. Swal Dalger has the, has the uh, range. And so mm -hmm. she put that together because um, Karen specs it in Sullivan threads. So that's another option. I mean, that's what is specced on the chart, DMC and Sullivan. Um, right. So that's, you know, that's another option for people who are interested. We're just, the three of us have just chosen to go elsewhere. So, right. um, and I love the silks. So, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, they'll, have, they'll look gorgeous. Yeah. They're just going to look gorgeous. Yeah, she's I'm, I'm just really <laughs> curious to see what she's going to come up with, with the, with, if she can get the hundred threes to work. Yeah. Well, even if I'm she can get, for. yeah, even if she can get most of them to work and then drop in a couple of others, I don't know what mm -hmm. else is available, but, um, uh, still, yeah. Yeah. I, th <laughs> I think, I think Tudor is the same. I think it's a thinner thread. The Tudor is uh -huh. from Gloriana. Yeah. yeah. So, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, that, that's just it. Yeah. It might, uh, I, I don't know, uh, Tudor versus 103, they might be pretty much the same diameter. Mm hmm Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely thinner than Soie d'Alger, yeah. Right. Right. Ha. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Yep. No matter what we end up with. Yep. January 1st. That's right. That's our big kickoff. So we're getting that together. We'll announce it just as soon as Kathy has things organized. And uh, normally it would have happened faster, but we, w we really wanted to offer uh, three different sets from for each of us. So, um, uh, just to have a, a different approach to a stitch along. So, uh, Kathy's kind enough to not only sponsor the show, but, um, or the stitch along, but also to go to the trouble, put these things together. So, and of course, obviously, uh, support her. If you're going to participate, please support Kathy and Needle and Haystack. Uh, whether you go with one of those three or something else, uh, please support her because she's been kind enough here to support us and make this happen. So, um, Yes. Um, December 2nd is when we return with Wednesday nights, and that's the Cindy Baldwin show that we had all put together, and then YouTube pulled the rug out from under us. So um, still looking for people who want to do Wednesday shows with us. It's really easy to do. Just uh, send me an email, and um, we'll set you up. It's um, It's not painful at all, and it's a lot of fun. You get to talk about your work and your experiences with it and uh it's fun so looking for people to do that um i guess that's really it isn't it i think so i think that's all the announcements wow at least, at least right now <laughs> seems, <laughs> seems like we're short half a dozen <laughs> <laughs> this just ain't right <laughs> i know i know all right so I got a question to ask you. Okay. So January 1st, we're starting Spring Hill. Um, when are we starting the white work sampler? Uh, that, I believe, starts right at the beginning of January, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, just <laughs> jump in with both feet, huh? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. Uh, if, yeah. If, if, I don't know if we've made it real clear. Beth and I have uh, uh, purchased the white work sampler class program journey with Trisha and Wynn at Thistle Threads. I think it's more of a journey now that I look it at it. It is a journey. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's just not a class. <laughs> yeah. Unless unless you're very dedicated and that's you're just going to concentrate on that one piece, it might be a class. But I have mm. a feeling for us it's going to be more like a journey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that was one of the questions. You know, can, can we do it at our own pace? Yes, you can. Good. <laughs> then Good. we're in. <laughs> <laughs> we're in. We can do it. We can do it. We can work yeah. on our own pace. And I don't know if there are slots left, but if you're interested, 17th Century Samplers, Thistle Threads, Trish and Wynn, um, uh, check it out if you're interested in that kind of thing. Now, we were we were talking the other day about, uh, or, well, you asked me how I was going to get organized for right. that thing. Right. And I said I was just going to print out all the pages and put them in a binder. And then you said, well, <laughs> think about that. <laughs> Not unless you have a professional printer. Uh, I don't remember. How many pages did we figure out it was? It was like 450. I mean, it's a huge. It's a book. Yeah. Yeah. It is a book. You're So I, I, I think the class is closed. I'm going to 
I haven't looked lately, but a friend sent me a note saying she thought it was closed. Oh, okay. But get on her newsletter because I think um, she will have – she'll be offering some other things. She offers other courses. But um, she is – she talked on your last live show. She talked about she had books in her. Well, she's already written one. <laughs> she, she's got this casket course, which is a book. Yes. I, well, and, and we'll, we'll, speak, we'll speak about you getting sucked into the casket thing in just a minute. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's later. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, let's let's hold that little nightmare for later. <laughs> it's not a nightmare. <laughs> Beth, the queen of willpower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Someone yeah. someone has to have it, right? Yeah. So yeah, so you were calculating now. I think you it was like 300 or 400 pages for this it's huge white work sampler thing and so uh, yeah i'm not printing all those out that's not happening um so i did because we signed up uh ahead of time and then if you if, so if you sign up and uh, ahead of time and pay the full boat then you get access immediately to the class that's going on now so i decided to put my to put the class the pages for me in my um, iPad Pro in my Good Notes app. So I sat down one night here just two or three nights ago, and it took, um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't print them out because it took the better part of the evening to download. I think it was the first seven lessons mm-hmm. are right. available, first seven or eight. And it took the better part of the evening to download those and get them organized in my Good Notes app. And with each passing one, it's like, oh, I'm glad I didn't print these out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, okay. And so here's my question because I, I have downloaded them and they are on my Google Drive. And I was complaining to my children. I said, so what happens is it says white 17th century white work. And then all you see is gobbledygook. And so it's like you look at it and you cannot see what lesson it is, <laughs> it, it, you know, and it's not any way organized. It's just downloaded onto there. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, Oh, what a mess. So now I've got a, so did you put them into, I did separate them. There's like a lesson and then there's history notes. So there's two separate things. Right. And I, I did separate that out. Yes. But how do you, are you separating each lesson into its own folder? Does that make sense? No. I have not gotten that far, and and that's interesting. And, and we're talking about this because it's it's, uh, it's huge. Applic- it, yes, yeah, and, and all, I mean this was huge and it's complex, but it's also applicable to other situations like this where you sign up for a long term course. Uh, how do you organize it? No, I dumped them in in the in sequential order, and so I in in my Good Notes app I can just go through them like a book. Okay. So I just have them like that. But now that you raise the question, it starts to make me think that I should um, organize them in in separate folders. Because I I think we're going to want to take pictures. Well, I know we're going to want to take pictures as we go. Right. And so to organize those photos... uh, is gonna yeah i think you're right i think i'm gonna have to change my which for me the way they're in, they're in now it's no big deal to do it but um <clears throat> i think that's yes that's it's interesting procedure because if you're gonna do a long-term class like this where there's multiple lessons or or multiple steps right you know there's 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 technology really offers some real advantages uh, to help you get organized, and I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about getting organized because that for is just dumping files somewhere. But I'm thinking about it in terms of as you're learning, making notes, and right. uh, and those kinds of things, so that you have it as a reference. Mm-hmm. That to me, that's where the real, you know, the, kind of the rubber hits the road thing, because um, right. And and my problem is I'm. I'm still kind of old school. I'm used, like, I take notes on a piece of paper Mm -hmm. still, um, which, of course, makes my children laugh. (laughs) Um, And so for me to put 
that's going to be a whole new another as another level of learning I'm going to have to do to take notes on a document. I'm not very I know I've done it and I and I know I can learn how to do it. I'm not um, I'm not afraid of that, but it's just a, it adds another level. Yeah. And I think it, it would be but it would be hugely helpful. I've got classes I've taken and I've I've, I've completed them where I you did have to I printed them. And but they'd be so nice like I was trying to reference something and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, now I've got to go find those notes, dig the paper out. Yeah. Um, where it'd be easy, you know, you have it on a, on a, on the computer, you just search what you're looking for and it'll pop up at least the file, whole file will. And then you can search from there. Right. Well, see, that's, so, you know, and this gets, I mean, we're talking about this obviously, cause it gets to the whole thing of, because people who a cross stitch and I, and I've uh, I've done it, uh, putting their charts on uh, GoodReader or some other app, and then you can uh, use a highlight tool and mark off what you've stitched. Um, right. Yeah. You know, I, and I I think that that we need to start look. If you do a lot of projects, you need to start looking at uh, converting these to some electronic format for this very reason, uh, storage, it, tracking, everything else. Right. Right. It'd be, and it's just, it's, it's easier to go back and look at those notes, to look at something if it's on, if it's, it's on a, on a searchable computer. My, my kids were laughing at me because I have a, um, all my recipes on sheets of paper and I, I sent one of them to get it, get it down. It's up in a high closet and I said, get that down for me so I can look for something. And all he did is he handed it to me and shook his head because it was he's like, we could make this into a searchable file on, on an electronic device for you, Mom. And I'm like, oh, I kind of like the paper. He's like, oh. <laughs> a ludite. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. But I know. I know. But 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 it, it I, I think it's just, you know, um, it, some of the, some of that is fear of the new technology, but I know they're right. It would be so much easier. And, and I do see people, they're like, they're doing some of those huge hades and they've got it on their right. um, device and they can mark it off. They can mark off that they've done all the blue triangles or right. whatever. And <laughs> Man, that would be so much nicer than this. Oh, did I remember to mark everything? Yep. You know, or, you know, it's not highlighted or whatever. It's just, there's so many great applications there and i just need to get i need to get over it yeah well but it's it yeah and that's just it it's the technology hump you just need Mm -hmm. to to suck it up and go through that learning curve to and then i think when you get to the other side of it then you realize oh this you know this is so much easier and and you're exactly right like a course like this uh, white work sampler uh, even just to store it on on a, a Google Drive, cloud drive, um, to store it there or OneDrive or or whatever. Uh, right. I mean, you know, the advantage there is is you're at a meeting and, and you know, like the subject comes up and you, oh yeah, I did that, and you you can mm-hmm. literally haul out your phone and and call it up and show someone. I mean, there's um, there's some real advantages there because how many times have we wanted to show somebody something and and oh it's at home, um, right. So right. I, yeah, it's, right. I think it's worth it. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I love technology. I uh, use it all the time, but, right. uh, but I have not really applied it to needlework um, in terms of, of this kind of thing. And so for me, this is going to be the first time to do a project like this and do it electronically, have everything electronic and, um, but but see but I uh, OneNotes is is the app that I use, and I I use that extensively. I've really come to love that thing. Matter of fact, like when we're doing this show or any any of the podcasts, I always do up a sheet of topics and questions and things so that we have something to guide us. And I used to print them out. I don't print them out anymore. I I have them on my. Uh, it's laying right here next to me on my iPad Pro, and then I have the. Um, I use the Logitech crayon electronic pencil and write right on it. And so I don't have the paper 
and um, uh, make notes right on it. And uh, like if, you know, technology, we end up with a break somewhere in the recording, I make a note of the time and all that stuff is just done electronically now. I don't have any paper. And, right. Um, uh, and, and I was watching my son do the same thing. He was on a Zoom meeting with his prof- – no, Zoom meeting, a Zoom class. And he had his little writing he, – he bought himself a little drawing tablet underneath. Mm-hmm. And he was taking notes. And he's used to having two monitors normally. So uh-huh. he's like, yeah, this is a pain. I've got to squeeze it down to my laptop. He's like, wasn't happy but he figured it out <laughs> and but but it was interesting to me because you know I'm I mean I took notes when I went to college but I took them on paper and then you know you had to transfer he goes yeah now everything in my class is all together and right. so it's really easy for me go to go back and look at things and I'm like wow that's brilliant and yeah. I, I know somebody the school books are electronic now too especially the engineering stuff right so yeah, that would be fabulous. Yeah. So I just need to get over that leap. And I know we, I know we have one notes on our computer. So I'm sure you do. Yeah. You got college <laughs> kids. I'm sure you do. Cause <laughs> well, see, that's where I got turned on to that. And if you go to uh, one notes and one notes is only for Mac, but I'm sure there are, are multiple things yeah. for PCs. Um, right. But if you one. go to that, and and those things all have come out of college kids, uh, because you know, look back in your college days where you had a textbook and you had notes, and you had lab notebook and all that stuff. Imagine if all that was in one spot, right? And you could easily alter it, move things around. Because uh, the other day when I was setting up the uh, uh, the white work thing, I'm thinking, oh man, if I'd had this technology when I was in school. What a difference it would make. Right. You know, all your classes in one device, textbooks, everything. Mm-hmm. Mark on them, annotate them, all the right. things. Oh. And and so then you start to think, all right, now a class like this white work sampler or a Hade or really right. anything. Um, right. You, you sit there and you make mark on it, uh, draw. You know, I can't remember how to do this stitch. Go get the... Uh, an image of the stitch, how to, you know, the, the steps with, you know, up one, down two, drag it over, put it next to your, th- to your uh, chart right there on the screen. And then you have it. And there's, there's just a lot of, a lot of benefit. Yeah. Right. Right. In fact, there was a, there was a discussion and I was, and I don't remember if it was EGA or ANG's magazine, but um, about having electronic books instead of, you know, I do have some books that I use as reference for my needlework, and mm-hmm. I have not ever bought an electronic copy of them because I thought, ah, you know, but I really use it. Well, I was going to go up to Chicago and take a Canvas class, and my thought was I should download a book on my phone uh-huh. <laughs> and have it because it would had had all the stitches there. It's uh, it would be easy to read. And I was thinking, you know, and that's just, again, that's just, I'm old school. I'm used to having a book. I do like, I do like books. I like the feel of them. Yeah. But there's times when having it on your phone or having it on an electronic device is way more helpful than yep. lugging a, a book <laughs> along with, you know, a, all your other stuff you really do need for taking a class. Right, right. And, and I think we've been, we've been saying one note. It's good notes. It's good good notes. good notes, not one note. Good notes, and that's different from Good Reader. Good Reader is another program. is an excellent PDF reader program, and you can use that. Uh, put your charts in there, and you can highlight what you stitched in Good Reader. That's an excellent program. It's one of my favorites. But Good Notes is three levels higher in terms of what you can do, and. Um, no, it really it really has me thinking about just kind of taking a different approach to all of the uh, uh, all of my needlework stuff. Yeah, right, right. And and you just had me thinking because I'm um, struggling with Montenegrin stitch, and I thought, wow, if it was up yep. on a screen <laughs> instead of me flipping a, <laughs> yep, hmm, maybe I would make more progress on that lovely little piece than. 
doing well, about yeah. an inch a night. <laughs> right. But see, there's there's the thing. All right. And, and you know, copyright, you know, always, always uh, sensitive to copyright issues. Right. But you take that little uh, book, I forget who authored it, on the Montenegrin Amy sketch. Mitten. Amy, Amy Mitten. Amy Mitten. And you, the, the section you're doing, if you're turning a corner or something, you take right. a picture of that, you drop it into uh, Good Notes or whatever you're using to have your notes right next to your chart. You're right. looking at your chart, and there's the pattern, there's the stitch procedure that you have to have right there and uh yeah tremendous you're not back and forth you don't have two different things you're trying to keep track of um right. yeah huge 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 mm -hmm. huge huge and i'm not i'm not sharing the book with anyone i would not make you wouldn't share that it would just no. be for your own use right yeah you're using technology for your own use yeah you still got to buy the book from amy mitten uh right yeah no, we're not cheating anybody's copyrights here no, but, no, um, absolutely. In fact, if she if she put it on electronic, oh, <laughs> that is a fabulous book. Yep. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna raise my hand and highly recommend that book. I I'm yeah yeah. But anyway, that would be great if she made it electronic. A lot of books are going that way. Mm -hmm. and that's um, and I'm I'm glad. You know, I I think that's a it's going to be more helpful as we as we move more into that right right technology world. And no, this white work sample, it's going to be one of those things where you're going to. She, in fact, um, I think she set up Pinterest boards. Yeah. I don't really like Pinterest, um, yeah. but she, I'm thinking, okay, now I've got to really get that so I can go look at that because it is helpful to look at images when you're working on something that complicated. Yep. Yeah. And and this white work sampler is going to be complicated. Yes, it <laughs> is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Well, that yeah, and that's the thing, you know. There's there's Trisha, you know. That's the level that Trisha operates at, because uh, we have history, we have a, a sampler that we're working on throughout the thing. So you have a whole section on how to do that, and then yes, uh, one one and sometimes two Pinterest boards that you can go to for examples. And you know, there's another example, uh, a link to those boards right there in your electronic notes, and you just punch the link and up it comes. And how convenient is that? Um, so, yeah, I think we need to take a, a hard look at, because let's see who, uh, Jen, oh, uh, I didn't mean to Jen talk Christy about her. Eight. No, uh, she's a black work person from England. Jen, if, nah, it's not going to come to me. But anyway, I'm interviewing her Friday. And she has a new book. I did not know she had a new book when I uh, wanted to talk to her, but now I'm excited because she has a brand new book on black work. Oh, and wow. so I thought, well, I'm going to buy it because I can have it before the class or before the, the uh, recording. Mm -hmm. Well, it's available digitally, but will oh. not be available in print till sometime next year. Oh. See, so, but that speaks to it's easier to get it out digitally and, and, you know, if people want to print it, so I bought the digital version and then there I am. All right. Now I have the digital version. I bought it through Barnes and Noble. Um, so it's on my uh, Nook um, app, but there it is. Now it's electronic. It's in the same device as Good Notes and my other things. So now I have a black work book uh, immediately available to me without hauling around the book. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing, and, you know, just being able to zoom in on those stitches, you know, you can hold her eyes, you know, you can make that as big as you need to, as your, big as your screen is basically. Yeah. If you need to look at the stitches and I, I yeah, that's a great. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I, I think we, as, as needle workers across the board that we need to start taking a look at, at just that, what, uh, right. what can it do for us? Because mm -hmm. I think there's some real, um, real benefit really there. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Definitely. So, yep. Um, I got to go organize my white work. I, <laughs> I, it probably won't happen. I'm, I'm hoping to do it while the college students are home. So they, if I if I get stuck, they can kind of help. That's me. right. Yep. Help me out. Yep. Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer Goodwin. Jennifer Goodwin is the um, uh, the lady that uh, uh, will she'll be coming up. Uh, uh, show coming up in December. Jennifer Goodwin, all on Blackwork. 
and just some magnificent stuff. And she has a new book out. And so now, yeah, I have that electronic. Um, oh. So very cool. Very, very cool. Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, I think that whole thing is, is, um, and, and it's, okay, this is going to get me in trouble, but, you know, o- older people, we have a, obviously a huge amount of uh, needle workers in this hobby are older women. And technology is not something they grew up with. Right. But they can get help. You know, people will help them uh, right. get set up. Because cause even there is a huge advantage that gets overlooked, the ability to magnify what you're looking at easily Mm-hmm. right on the screen and to brighten it so if you have failing eyes you can see it b- better right another right. plus see and so so you get your you know your your daughter your granddaughter your whomever best <laughs> best sons uh to help you out and help you get it set up and show you how to use it hold your hand because mm-hmm. the benefit on the other side is huge um, right right yeah and 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 people are afraid of the technology, and it you know it, it's it is it's not it's you're afraid you're going to break something, you're going to do something really bad. Well, you know for the most part, no, they make them pretty. Yeah. The technology now is pretty user friendly. I mean, the worst you could do is you know you delete a whole book, and you're like ah, <laughs> what did I do? And even then, it's unless you really delete it, it's 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 in your trash, and you can generally restore right. it. Right. Right. Um, yeah, and if it's on a tablet or phone, uh, right. it's backed up. At right. least it, it better be backed up. If you're not backing up your tablets and phones, you're just checking gas tanks with matches. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's backed up. So, if, you know, if it blows up on you, so what? Get get it off the backup. Um, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, yeah, you're exactly right. These days, there's very little to be afraid of when it comes to technology. In the early days of PCs and stuff, yeah, you could... <laughs> <laughs> you can you wreck things. The wrong <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, something it would disappear and it would disappear forever. Yep. And you're like, oh the old and blue screen of death, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen so much anymore. No. But that's you know, that's the other thing is is if you're uh, older and your eyesight and you haven't worked with technology, have right. a look at it. Have a look at it because uh it could really I, I would think for even some people make it possible for them to to do some stitching they haven't been able to do because of eyesight issues. Um, right. And, and, and I know this is impossible right now with COVID, but um, I know our local junior college would offer technology classes for seniors mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. or for anybody who wanted them. Um, yep. Obviously not right now, but you know, they'll, they'll, it's, it's going to open up again. I, I have hope. Um, so <laughs> when that all happens, it'd be worthwhile to take a class if you can't, if you don't have someone who can help you um, do it yeah. at home, it's it's worth it. It's worth it's worth it taking the time to learn. It's good for your brain. Yes. Talk about crossword puzzles. It's good for your brain. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Makes me think. Maybe we maybe we should do a show to think oh. about that. Do a live show and uh, demonstrate some of this, so people can at least be exposed to it. Right. Probably wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Okay. So you bought. You bought a casket. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now you're going to move right into that, aren't you? We're going right to caskets now. <laughs> right, to cas- right to caskets. All right. Well, I have a friend who's going to be listening to this, and she's going to be like, you were supposed to tell me. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll talk to you later. You know who you are. Um, so what sucked me in was um, Katie. I was on Instagram, and Katie, I can't pronounce her last name, Strachkin, S-T-R-A-C-H-A-N. On Instagram, um, yes. she has K, K embroidery. Anyway, she was doing a Zoom lecture for the San Francisco Needlework Design School, right? Yes. On her finished casket. San Francisco School of Needlework and Design, yes. So I didn't get to, for some reason, I couldn't catch that Zoom meeting. But I, I keep looking back at her photos. <laughs> <laughs> of She had done trees on her, the outside of her casket. And she made it sound like she'd done several of these. And then she did a small photo of her stump work faces. And I thought, I 
want to do that. That is on my bucket list. I am not going to be happy unless I sign up for this silly course. <laughs> I, just, I was like, I'm just doing it. I'm signing up. So I did, and I don't regret it. I'm, I'm excited. I don't know when I'm going to start the silly thing. Um, but, um, it's on, it's been on my bucket list since I saw, oh, Mary Corbett posted Trisha's original start uh -huh. of this box, these yep. boxes years ago, years yeah. ago. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I've got, I've always wanted to do it. And I thought, yeah, then I'm not getting any younger. Um, I might as well start the course now and try to finish it then wait another 10 years or you know when you don't know and that's the other issue I was um she has a site if you join her any of her classes it's a private site called Ning yeah no, this, is, this is this is Trisha Nguyen again Trish, uh, yes, Trisha Threads, Nguyen, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yes so you and it it's like a big community is what it is and I went and read one of her posts about people taking advantage of her and her casket class. And I was just disgusted. People stopped making payments. Um, they found someone else's copy of the lessons. Oh. And so they got the materials and then they were like, well, I don't need the rest of the lessons. I'm oh, done. Oh, come on and, folks. Really? And I just oh. wanted to, I wanted to cry. I wanted to cry for her because I know the expense and the time she has put into these classes. Massive, thought, massive on both fronts. Expense and time, massive on both fronts. Yes. And not yes. massive like 500 bucks either. Massive no. dollars. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Of her own personal money to make these classes happen. And I, I just, it just made me mad. And I thought, okay, I am tired of sitting on the fence. Cause I have literally been sitting on the fence on this class for 10 years. You know, whenever it was, whenever she started offering these caskets, I've been looking at them and I've been going, Oh, maybe, maybe <laughs> not. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. And, um, I finally decided, no, that's it. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm taking the class. And I did blame Gary. I told it, I told her, <laughs> I told her it was Gary's fault. It, you know, he pushed me over the edge, but, um, there's no extra charge for that. <laughs> yes, fiber talk made me buy it. Yep, uh, that doesn't really fly at my house, but you know, no, no, no. <laughs> no. T-shirts still available too, by the way. Fiber tech, maybe, in case you need, yeah. In case you need one. Yep. Um, but yes, I'm so glad I I've signed up. I have okay, so again, take I, so take me through. So so you sign up, you you pay the fee. However you do it, doesn't matter. Uh, right. Pay the fee now. Does, did Trisha ship you the whole thing? Um, no. Parts come along in, at different times. How does this work? It's it's coming along in parts. In fact, um, I haven't bothered her because it's. I think it's a terrible time to bother people about something as trivial as a, a casket. But <laughs> I I'm wondering. I think some of the pieces um, are not here for this group um, for this last sign up of caskets. So I think some of them aren't going to be here till August. So I know she's shipping them in like, cause it's huge. It's a huge, didn't she, she showed it on the yeah. first live video you did with her. Yeah. So I yeah. think it's like three separate. If, if you pay in full, it's three, maybe three separate installments. But then if you're paying with the payment plan, it's like seven. So, um, it's, so it's coming in a little at a time. Mm-hmm. But again, it's that massive download of, of papers of, well, not papers, but of the instructions. Yeah. And again, it, people have said, I went and I reread the comments about it one last time before I signed up. And people said, it's like taking a master's <laughs> class. And I thought, you, have, okay. you, have, you have put this off and put this off and <laughs> rationalized 6,000 ways. <laughs> And, and and the thing is, a friend and I discussed it back and forth, and we're like, and it's like, we do not need this class. We, you know, it's not like we don't have other things we could stitch. But the difference between this one and and the white worker, I think any of Trisha's classes, 
is it is like you're taking a college class. It's not you're just going to have something at the end. You're not, you can use it that way. You can just stitch the project. You don't have to read all the history. You can just stitch it. Yeah. But if you want, it can be a true learning experience. And I love learning, um, especially history. Yep. So I'll probably go and find a great courses CD to listen to while I'm doing some basic stitching on whatever period where she's going over like 17th century samplers. I'll go find some great written stuff and listen to history uh-huh. in that period um, mm-hmm. just to get in the mood. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Why not? Right. Yeah. Right. But, so, um, so, okay. And I know threads, uh, threads and, and bits and pieces and parts for those things. I mean, they're, they're rather complex right. um, are all coming, but now, so you so you, you signed up now and and there's no requirement to do what uh she design the design she did as a matter of fact she encourages you to do your own so what is your thinking about uh what you're going to put on the on the outside well okay so Allison Cole did you see I know you saw it that facebook yes. post I in saw it, yes Sassy Jacks <laughs> facebook page so you have to dig through all of this you have to go to Sassy Jacks her name is Patty, and she did a dragon on the top. Patty um, Tr- Tronrud. Yes. Yes. And that, I have loved Allison Cole's dragons. Every time I, I almost, again, I almost, I so, showed great self restraint. She had a dragon class, and I almost signed up for it, but I restrained myself. Now I'm regretting it because it would go great on the top of a casket. <laughs> but um, my middle child, my middle son, had at one point in time a bearded dragon. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so if you go to Allison Cole's site, she has, oh, I don't know what kind of lizard it is on her site. It's probably Australian. But I thought, hmm, I could put a bearded dragon on one side, a fat cat on the other. I don't know what I, <laughs> and then, I don't know what I do for this, you know, but I'm thinking something different. It would be either something to represent my kids something that they liked or um, I'm not sure yet. I'm uh-huh. not that far along in my thinking. I'm, I'm hoping there's lots of basic stuff so I can make that decision as I go. <laughs> okay. All right. Cause yeah, Patty Tronrud, uh Well, I, I saw that and I was going to tag you. Uh, I saw the picture and I thought, Oh, I got to tag Beth on this, but you were, you were already way ahead of me on that. In the, yes, uh, I already in, saw it. Yeah, I already in, saw in, it. In the sassy Jacks uh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I, you know, I was going to tag you and make some snarky comment, and then now you were already there. So, just <laughs> you didn't need to make any snarky comments. I already, I already saw it and was in love. I was like, oh, look at that. Because it's Brilliant. stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Oh yes. Yeah, and and so it's you, you know what was I'll tell you what it was about that. I'll tell you what it was about that. She, the dragon and all the work is stunning, but she didn't do a bunch of stuff all around it to take away from that dragon. It's mm-hmm. it's all around it is very simple and it really right. makes that thing just really just stand out in sh- in all of its glory and I really applaud her for the restraint because the temptation would be to do a bunch of things around it and uh, uh, she showed restraint there and and it really oh man it's just classy looking right right yeah. and th- and then Katie was talking about hers and this was on Instagram um, the one that talked at the San Francisco place. Mm-hmm. And she was saying inside she hides little stitching surprises. And I thought, Oh, so th- it, I'm thinking if you, as you learn a technique, okay, I've got this casket and in the casket class, we're going to make that, um, well, it's supposed to be a sort of a nightcap for her cat <laughs> or something. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't know if you remember. And that's kind of the last thing I thought, yeah. well, what if you made that and you stuck it in your, um, and your my casket. Mm-hmm. That'd be the perfect place for that. Yep. Yep. Oh, I am. I. I, I knew you were gonna. I knew you were gonna buy it. Okay. <laughs> that I could tell. I, just, I could tell the first time you mentioned it. I knew you were gonna get it eventually. So that, you know, it was, for me, it was just going along for the ride with Beth here. But, um, <laughs> but what I will really enjoy. Two things. One is just seeing what you do design-wise on the outside. Mm-hmm. 
But then what will I think will be the most fun vicariously is as you get used to the casket being around and all the little secret compartments and your mind has a chance to work, what you do with all of those, I think will be even more fun than what you do on the outside. Right. Just because there's so much opportunity for creativity there. Right. And I think that's the other thing about, because I, I went back and forth still, because I thought, oh, I really want to learn stump work. Is this the, the best opportunity to learn it? And I thought, you know, you know, in a way it is, because it gives me, it gives me a big surface to work on. But um, all the different techniques that are on there, it'll be fun to learn those and grow and design. And then she's there to help you. She's there to hold your hand and to yeah, to encourage you. And I think there's that, that's the other thing. There's a whole community there um, to cheer you on. If you take mm -hmm. one of those classes. Yeah. Yeah. No, she does uh, just my exposure to the white work thing. It's very clear that, that her classes are set up properly on all fronts, thorough, um, mm -hmm. every opportunity to learn, every opportunity to get help. Yeah, no question about it. Yep. Right. <laughs> well, I, this, <laughs> but, you, I, but you so you knew I was going to take oh, it, yeah. huh? Beth, come on, really? <laughs> <laughs> really? I could tell by the tone of your voice the first time you mentioned it. Oh, she's getting oh, one. I, she's getting oh, one. God. It's oh, just a matter of how long it takes her to rationalize it. She's getting one. <laughs> oh, and I just jumped off the cliff. I thought, oh, I must be nuts. That's what I. This is what I need. Another big class to take. <laughs> but you know, I, it, it, you know, give you a hard time about it, but I don't blame you. You know, I mean, it, it's not for me. Like a casket, it just they're fascinating to look at. They're gorgeous, beautiful, stunning needlework. All those things I really appreciate and and admire what they are, but they just don't appeal to me. You know, it's just okay. not my cup of tea. But if they are, and knowing that uh, the ones like Trisha's put together were you know, authentic on all fronts, <clears throat> and, and that there aren't going to be any more, that right. if, if you want, if you have any interest at all in doing it, and want to own one of those things, you know, yeah, of course, dive in. And, and it's a significant expense and it's a tremendous commitment uh, needlework wise, but do it because as Tricia has said, there's going to come a time where they're just not, not available anymore. And, right. And, and for me, part of the interest in the caskets has always been is how are they made? How are you mm -hmm. adding those panels to the sides? It's it's the construction. It's kind of like the my my kind of my engineering brain. How how are they making that? How are they making everything fit together? Right. Um, and and putting all those sides on, putting the insides in, putting the paper in. There's 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 construction in it. Yep. And and I and I like that. I mean, I do like making those sort of things. So, right. Well, see, that's, that's the, it's it's ideal for someone like you, you know, dying things, all the things you guys do uh, mm -hmm. in the creative world of just making things and seeing how they come out. That is an ideal project for you because it hits all your buttons. Right. Yeah. Right. And 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 the history, um, yep. all the different supplies, you know, it'll be fun. And, and I'm so tactile. So to see how they feel because i've just been curious about it it's just it's gonna be fun i just cannot wait yep but that's I, I don't think that's she's not shipping now she's she's kind of holding off on shipping till january i do believe probably um, a good move to get, <laughs> right right now is not a good time to ship anything alone. no no and it's not nothing like that so i think it won't be shipped till then and that's fine yep i mean yeah, you're not bored. I got to organize my white work sample that yeah. we're starting. Well, I, I, uh, I will. I know I, for one, will really enjoy watching you work your way through it, and seeing what you learn from it and the experiences you have with it. Because I, I know you're going to have a great time with it. I have no doubt. Um, and at the end, on the other side of it, you will have uh, skills that you don't have now and experience that. Uh, is hard to come by otherwise. So, yeah. and, and and for those who are curious and and are interested in thinking, oh, you know, I'm not skilled in that. That I'm worried about it. You know, I was like, oh, you know, how am I going to make those faces? Yeah, how am I going to make my stump work? And I've gone and looked at her gallery. I've looked at other people's 
pieces. And I'm thinking, you know, they all learned. Yeah. They all yeah. learned how to do it. You know, and they were all, you know, <laughs> so I can learn too. Yep. So it's just a learning experience. It'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. That's, but that's the whole thing. And you know, you, uh, you have me, you have me suck into Julie Fay Fan Balzer of Balzer Designs. It's your <laughs> You're fault. You're welcome. It's your You're fault. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I've been listening to some of her podcasts and reading her blog posts, uh, right. and um, uh, she's she's definitely worth following, folks. It really is is worth following. But uh, you know, we were talking about um, what was that book? Uh, a year of yes. What? Uh, yeah, a year you know, of yes. Saying yes. Right. To things, because this right. is what you, you know. This is what you just did with this casket. You, you, right. A real stretch for you on several fronts, but no, yes, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to uh, work my way through it, learn from it, and get to the other side. And uh, um, right. with any of this needlework, no matter what level you're at, I think it's it's an important thing to have in in mind. Is do I think I can do it? Am I interested? Man, dive in, dive in. Right. Yeah. It, it, and if you, I don't know, I just read something where it talked about if you're doing the same thing, even if it's, it's, it's good for you, you know, like crossword puzzles, whatever, if you're, well, and maybe this was from Julie, she was talking about if you're just, if you're just doing it and it's a rote repetition. So you're saying, okay, yeah, I got this done, but you're not really making any progress. You're not learning anything new. Then yeah. Is that, is that really what you want? You know, do you want to kind of push yourself forward? And that's with this casket, I know, well, and the white work sampler class, I know too, it's going to be a push forward. It's going to be learning new things. Um, yeah. You know, but if I say yes, since I said yes to these things, now I'm going to have to start saying no to things because there's just not <laughs> enough time in the day. <laughs> I have to start saying no. I can't do that one. Yep. Yeah. There's the other side of that coin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 But but that whole concept of of saying yes when you know, there's a challenge there, you're not sure if you can do it. It sure interests you. It would be really cool to experience it. And it, it, you know, or, or you know, nah, I don't think so. I'm chicken. Nah, do it. Give it a give it a whirl. Give well, it a whirl. And and, and I'm. I'm even thinking it wasn't that long ago that I really didn't stitch on 40 count linen. I thought it was too small. Mm -hmm. uh, and I even remember, I mean, it, it, within the last few years, I, I had tried it and I was afraid. I was like, Oh, you know, 40 count, you know, it's small. Can I stitch that small? And now it's like, Oh, this isn't a big deal. Yeah. You know, you just need, you know, good tension on your piece so you can see the weave and good lighting and maybe a little magnification and away you go. Yep. It's the same sort of thing. You know, if you don't try it, how you know you don't like it? And, you know, um, but if you try it, you might find that you really enjoy um, a new technique, uh, you know, a new piece of fabric. Um, it's, it's worthwhile to say yes. Yep. Try it. Try it. You might like it. And at some point, it's just needle and thread. So if it doesn't work out, it's just needle and thread. Yeah. It's just needle and thread. Yeah. It, you know. No, that's yeah. I I posted on Instagram here last week, a few days ago, whatever. I've been uh, my mountain biking, and uh, I started. I've, I had a mountain bike for five years now, and I've just monkeyed around with it because I love riding my road bike out in the country for hours. You know, it's just what I I just love it, and. I, so I had bought this mountain bike and I've just picked away at it. And right like two miles from my house is a really nice network of trails, um, several of them challenging. And this spring I said to myself, all right, if you're going to own this mountain bike and you're going to keep moving around the garage, you're either going to use it or get rid of it. So get your butt over there and teach yourself how to ride on these trails, ride over rocks and tree stumps and all those things. And so I have, I've made 70 trips since March over to this trail, the set of trails. And some of them, I, I, some of them I'll never ride. They're just too scary, but, uh, and I've forced myself. All right. 
and I did a lot of walking <laughs> in the spring, a lot of walking, uh, because I was afraid to go down some of these dips and so on and so forth. And I just kept plugging away at it. Thought, no, I'm going to try it. I'm going to get comfortable. I'm going to learn, learn to trust the equipment. Uh, you know, and, and there was always <clears throat> in this, uh, there's two, two, uh, loops that I've learned, gotten pretty comfortable with, but there's one little feature that is this double dip. Like you go down easily six foot or more like it feels like it's straight down back up over a hump back down and back up and there's a there's a, a path that goes around that <laughs> and, <laughs> and I always took that path because it looks scary I mean right. it, it truly looks scary and and it it looks like at any point there you're going to get caught stop and then get to fall off your bike and, and tumble down to the bottom of of the little valley and so yeah, I, I'm not I'm not doing that, you know. Right. And then uh, here in the last couple of weeks, I ride by. I stopped a couple of times. You know, I I think now I could do that, but I never saw anybody ride it. And so it was the other day. Uh, there was a, a young lady, a young lady, young to me. She's probably in her mid twenties. Clearly knew how to ride a mountain bike, like clearly skilled. And she had stopped because of paths. Uh, have enough room for one rider, but they're two-way paths. So you have to pull over to the side sometimes to let people by. And she stopped, and I just just, uh, just a fluke thing. I said, hey, would you mind showing me how to do this feature? You know, thing, you know she says, no, fine. You know, but right. I'm, I'm asking her to interrupt her workout, her ride, to help me. She said, sure. What is it? I said, well, it's this double dip thing over here. She'd never ridden it. She said, sure, I'll, I'll see if I can help you. And uh, so I took her over there, and she walks up to it, gets off her bike, walks up to it. She says, oh, this looks like it looks like momentum will get you through this without any trouble at all if you just have a, a decent amount of speed going into it. And uh, she says, let me give it a try. You know, and this is, this is me after <laughs> how many months of just riding around it. She's never seen it. Let me give it a try, you know. Uh -huh, right. The, the invisibility of youth. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right, right. Yeah. And, and of course, she does it like she's been doing it a hundred times, you know. And she gets off and comes back. She says, yeah. She says, you can get, you just get up enough speed and the momentum will take you through it. And just, just you might have to do a couple pedals, but it'll you'll get right through it. And as you go over that middle hump, you'll get enough speed up to get up to the next side. And she says, you want to try it? And she said, just stay back on your saddle. Don't get over the front because you go right over the handlebars. And see, that's the other part on some of those. You, you got to be careful. <laughs> And I, all right, all right. That's now, what I would do. I would yeah. be, I would be, I face planted. But yeah. go ahead. And I've done that once, and it ain't fun. Um, <laughs> I, all right, now I've seen you do it. She's given me a little coaching, and so I said yes, and I went for it. And by golly, the first time I got it, right through it, got it. She says, "All right, now you want a video, right?" Yeah, I want a video. <laughs> so she did a video <laughs> of the second time, but it was it was the kind of thing where for how many months I've been scared to death of it. And I got a little help and a little coaching, and it turns out it wasn't that big of a deal at all. It was actually a great deal of fun, and and so I rode that. She, I thanked her, you know, and of course she can't. I can't give her a hug, can't shake her hand or anything, you know. And she went on about her ride. I did it three more times. It was so much fun. I did it three more times <laughs> before I moved on. But it was it was that. And then you know we're gonna talk about this saying yes. And it was yeah, there it was right there. Just say yes, take a run at it, and it worked out. And, um, and, and, and here's the other thing. And here's the other thing. You, you made me think of this while you were talking is, you know, you, you were afraid you finally found someone who had, we, could do it. And so yep. you, you asked for their help. I think sometimes with these, like a new technique, um, I, I know a lot of people linen again is, is a real breakthrough when you're moving from, if you're, if you're using ADA and you want to try linen, it's like, Oh, this is a, it's a scary thing. Um, there's so much help out there anymore um, in the new, on, yeah. on YouTube, on um, online help. Um, people want to help. And if with new techniques, you know, saying yes to these things, yeah, maybe it's new. You don't know. You're afraid to try it. But there's help. There's help for for trying new any of these new techniques, anything new you want to try. And yeah, you're, you're not you're not on your own uh, for any of no. these things. No. No. 
no, no. And, and I found over the years, um, for the most part, needleworkers generally tend to be very generous and with help. Um, my guild's getting ready to do a piece and only the, the, there's one gal who's leading it and she's, she's way ahead of all the rest of us. Um, <laughs> And I finally said, you know what, because we were supposed to meet, you know, this, we started it, oh, I think last year sometime, but it, you know, March ended it and we haven't met. And I said, all right, I'm going to set up Zoom. So it's a small enough group. Let's, let's meet in a Zoom and she can just help us with it. We can ask her questions that way. She can hold up her piece and said, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Because all, everyone's terrified to work on this. <laughs> this piece uh -huh. and i just don't have time i'm not afraid i'm really not so much afraid of it as it's like oh you know start another piece you know right, right. but 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 you know they've all bought a kit they have mm -hmm. the kits and i'm like okay ladies let's do a zoom and let's get you help and let's get started on this yeah so and i think they they were all afraid and once i posted let's do a zoom they were like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, yeah, let's go. Yep, yep, help. So yep. just ask for help, and that's the other thing. Say yes, say yes, and new techniques are fun, and, and ask for a little help. Yep, yeah, because there, yeah, there's plenty of help, there's plenty of YouTube, there's people, and, and, there, and the technology now, everybody is over the hump with technology when it comes mm -hmm. to online sharing, so there are plenty of ways to, to see it visually and right. uh, um you know, and, and understand there are more ways, more than one way to do these things. So, you know, what right. somebody says does not mean that's it forever. Uh, there right. are other ways or you learn that way and you say, no, I think I have a better way. Well, at least you made you, you got so you could do it. Um, right. Yeah. And, and I want and to suggest people I have, you know, like I said, I reached out to my group and said, let's let's do a Zoom. No one has reached no one in my guild in my embroidery guild has reached the other way to me saying, Hey Beth, can you help us by setting up a zoom or doing a video or, or some set of and ask if you're afraid, you know, if you, if you're nervous about that sort of thing, reach out to somebody that, you know, is a little more techie who would help you and, yep. and move in that direction. Yep. Um, people are, people are willing to share. Right. right all the time. Right. Yep. Right. Because we've all been there, and <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there, and 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 we've all needed help, and so right. and, and it's just our way to pay back, you yep. know. Pass it on. Pay Make sure help. somebody Pass else on. has the same enjoyment. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And share right. the love of it. All right. Say yes. Give it a try. Say yes. <laughs> Join the casket class. <laughs> well, all right. Think hard about that before you do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, that's going to be fun to watch you. That's going to be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yep. It'll be fun. Yep. All right. That's it. We're done. All um, right. Let's see. Who Who is Sunday? Oh, Sunday is um, uh, Nicoletta Carbone uh, from the uh, magazine Juliana Ricama. Oh, that's Oh. Yes. And a heads up about that, that we had to do through an interpreter. And so I'm, I'm going to have to, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to have to go through. And what I'm going to do is I'll ask the question and then I'm going to cut out the sections where the interpreter asked Nicoletta. So, cause otherwise it's, it's just gets too tedious. So um, uh, I'll ask the question. Um, and I had to go to a complete question and answer thing just because that was the only way it was going to move forward. So I asked the question and then uh, you'll hear, Nicoletta in Italian and then the interpreter in English. Um, so that should move it along, give it a little pace. But uh, a really excellent um, a conversation about the magazine and about uh, Italian embroidery and the, you know, the world of the Italian embroidery hobby in general. It was really, really good. So, um, yeah, that'll be interesting to hear. Yeah, yeah. Very plus, interesting. Plus, Italian's fun to listen to, quite frankly. So. <laughs> And out, and out of that, I have two or three uh, designers, Italian designers, that Nicoletta put me on to. And oh, great. Uh, so I should be able to, I haven't lined them up yet, but should be able to get uh, some interviews with some other Italians um, to learn more about. Because it's just a different world of embroidery and, and um, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, like to learn more about that. So, yeah. Yes. Yep. So that's Sunday. And Cindy Baldwin next Wednesday, and then we'll see what happens after that. All right. Thanks for listening. If you're, right. in, the, if you're in the U.S., happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving. Yep. Gobble to you, wobble. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>